When I was 18 and I finished high school, I worked for one summer in a factory. The foreman there sent me out on one job per day, very repetitive. Take an input box of metal plates. Take one, put it in a holder, drill a hole. Take it out of the holder, put it in an output box. Over and over again, all day. Very soon, you learn that if the input box is over here and the output box is over there, it costs a lot of energy. But if you tighten things up with the input and output very close, you can relax a little bit more and still get your quota of holy plates done. I'd like to show you an efficient workflow in Kendall for making beautiful curly arrows. It's one that most people don't go to the trouble to do because they don't appreciate the importance of logistics in a process like this. Let's consider this problem. We'd like to protonate propene on the terminal alkene carbon, and I want to draw a nice curly arrow for doing that. Most people would draw an arrow like this. I can tell immediately that's been drawn using the curved arrow tool in Kendra. It works. It's not very pretty. And it's hard to give the arrow any style. For that, you need the pen tool. And the pen tool is a little bit fiddly. There are two versions of the pen tool. There's freehand and there's the vector-based pen tool. Freehand can work. If it's a simple arrow, I drew this one, looks okay, that's fine. But if I want to give the arrow a little bit more style, make it a little bit more complicated, it's fiddly to do that on a mouse. It's better to go to the vector-based tool where I can massage the way the arrow looks. In this software, let's look at how to draw a vector-based arrow or two. And then I'd like you to practice doing this over and over again to build a quiver of arrows. And in doing that repetitively, you may well remember exactly what the procedure is. Once we've got this quiver of arrows, we'll put it in a default stationary file. So every time we open Kendra, bang, that file shows up, and perhaps containing key structures that we might modify to get the graphic we'd like to have. The longhand procedure for doing this is click, click, jiggle, bend, escape. You got it? Click, click, jiggle, bend, escape. It's the escape part that's very easy to forget. It takes practice not to forget escape. Sounds silly, but that's the way it is. Additionally, the jiggle was a little bit fiddly. So you click where you want the arrow to start. You click where you want the arrow to end. You jiggle up and down, perhaps on the beginning of the arrow, until the hand with a plus sign in it turns in to hand with the strike the arrows and then drag up or down to bend the curve of the arrow and the extent to which it goes up or down until it looks the way you want it to. Actually, there is an easier procedure. The easier procedure is to click at the beginning of the arrow, click at the end, but don't take your finger off the trackpad or your hand off the mouse, drag up or down to bend the curve as you want it to the extent that you want. Then take your hand off the mouse, don't move it anymore, and remember the key step escape. This is the end product that we're aiming for. We want a quiver of curly arrows horizontally going to the right, horizontally going to the left, going up and down, and including droppers and gamers where the arrow goes down and the arrow goes up. 
and we'd like this to be extended or squeezed. Try it, please. Stop the video. See how many of these you could make. Can you get an output that looks like this? To do that, we need a file, two pages across, two pages deep, portrait one, with probably the crosshairs shown. And on the top, we're going to put our quiver. On the bottom, we're going to put structures we know and love and use a lot, and anything else that might come in useful. Try it now, please. Stop the video, practice building that quiver. Now, as many of you will have realized, and I hope you didn't cheat like this, you can make an arrow, copy it, paste it, and squeeze it a little bit. Copy, paste, squeeze. Once you have a series of arrows where the span is progressively less and less, you can copy that row and flip vertical or flip horizontal to get all four orientation going up to the right and up to the left, going down to the right and down to the left. Okay, that's the fast way of doing it, but I wanted you to practice making your quiver and click, click, jiggle if you must, bend and escape. Now I want you to save that document as a usable resource. We're going to save it as a ChemDraw stationary file. What we want is a file that will open when we open ChemDraw. We should maybe click on ChemDraw, up in one click, bang, everything's there for us to draw a mechanism. So how do we go about saving this default stationary file? First, locate where your stationary file is. Go to ChemDraw, Preferences, and look for file paths. Mine was too complicated, I had a lot of them. So I removed the ones I didn't want. I left one showing me exactly where I've decided my stationary folder should be. And then we want to say into that particular stationary folder. We can navigate to the default stationary path see where the stationary is, and then save as stationary. But ChemDraw throws us the code. It suggests the stationary folder that is the standard one. And if you change it, you might change it because every time you upgrade ChemDraw, you don't want to drag things across. That's what I think. So if you change it, you have to navigate to where your stationary folder is and store the default stationary pad in that folder. Of course, if you don't want this one to be your default, don't do this step. But I suggest for a lot of you, it would be good. Let's practice again. Let's shoot a few curly arrows. And I want to do this on a sign-in die. I like sign-in dies. Let's figure out how a nucleophilic attack on that mesocarbon with the chlorine in it will proceed. The nucleophile comes in, let's push the curly arrows towards positive charge. Works like a charm. Okay, pop quiz. Let's go to a side five system with a mesochloride. Push the curly arrows. How does that work? Not very well. That nucleophilic attack doesn't work for Psi 5 systems. Show it in chemical. And then make me a prediction. What would happen if we have a Psi 3 with a mesochloride? Thank you, everybody, for listening. Pleasure to talk to you again. I would like to thank Fulbright Malaysia, the Malaysian American Commission for on Educational Exchange, Macy, at the School of Pharmacy, University of Malaysia. I have 
an ebook on bonding and hybridization. It is published electronically on Mac iBooks, and soon I hope to find the time to put it on Amazon Kindle. I have workbooks in hard copy for sophomore organic chemistry. I call them sophomore organic chemistry by inquisition. You can buy them from my website, www.buyinquisition.org, and also from Amazon. But at my website, the answers are posted there too. So students who work through these problems can check. I also have organic chemistry by inquisition number one, general methods. That's a more advanced workbook for graduate students. If you buy it, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.